At LockDock Security, our mission is to help you protect your people and your property. And today, we're going to be answering the question of what is the best keyless door lock? It's something that we get asked pretty regularly, and we're going to kind of break that down today. And maybe not necessarily in terms of what is the best keyless door lock, but what are the features that you should be looking for and the functionality you should be looking for in a keyless door lock? Thomas is with me today. How are you doing, Thomas? Doing wonderful on yourself. I'm doing fantastic. The so This is becoming a popular thing, right? Do you even carry keys to your house anymore? I, I do not carry a house key anymore. Um, we do have locks that have keys on them or have locks with keys at sure. my house, but the one that we use on a regular basis no longer has a key on it. I, I have been kind of navigating that for the last several years, and even just like the lock that we're showing here, the lock that I have on my house does not even have a place to put a key. That is correct. So therefore, I, I'm not having to carry one. And there are some pros and cons to it. So we're going to talk about that. And the big question that a lot of people are going to ask is, well, what happens if the batteries die? Because obviously this is a battery powered lock. So we'll jump into all that momentarily. And we'll talk more about the differences between uh, a lock for your house and a lock for your business. Absolutely. A commercial lock versus residential lock. There's a lot of differences and we'll be able to break all of those down. All right. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a homeowner. Uh, I've got a family. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm living by myself and I'm looking at a keyless door lock for my house. What are some of the things that I would want to be mindful of when I go down that path to, to select the lock? I think one of the biggest things is, is for your homeowner is ease of installation. Okay. So is it a DIY product? Can you install it yourself or do you need to have a professional come out and install it for you? And depending on your your capability at that point, that'll be your first part that you want to look at. Because a lot of the, the door locks, the keyless door locks now will fit into the existing hole for a normal deadbolt. Yeah. This deadbolt retrofits right onto your door from an existing deadbolt hole. It's it's a matter of about five screws, mm -hmm. and most people can install this by themselves. It does not require uh, any any drilling. It does it's, not require any drilling. Driver. There's not a whole lot of mess. There's no special knowledge that has to be done. It's pretty easy to install this. So ease of installation. Another thing that uh, I, what's another thing that you would want to be mindful of if you're looking for uh, a keyless entry lock? A uh, keyless entry lock. The, the next thing for, for me would be ease of, of programming. Sure. Can I program it? Can I add and delete users? So when we use it for our house, um, I have two teenagers and they have friends and sometimes their friends need access to the house for this side or the other and we may give them a code. Mm -hmm. We may also take that away when they're no longer friends because teenagers have sure. friends that come and go. Well, and you might have a babysitter. Maybe have you a, have somebody that comes to clean the house. A babysitter, somebody coming to, to clean the house. If you have a contractor that's coming over to do some other work, mm -hmm. can you add their code for the number of days that they're there and then take their code away easily mm -hmm. is a big feature that you're looking for. Yeah, ease of programming, I think, would, in my opinion, would rate high on the list because outside of that, you're just literally leaving the lock there with one code. And then by the time you need to change something, it's just a whole complicated maneuver. So how easily can you do that? And then I, I would imagine another big question would be, can I connect it to my phone? Is it something that I can remotely access? Absolutely. And if, if, if you're a, a smart home type person and you have a lot of your items connected to your phone, does it match to what you're trying to match it up to? So if if you're if you're with one platform on everything, don't mm -hmm. get a lock that works with just the other platform. And and one of the things I would also add to that to to build on that same case is make sure that it's either if you're going to try to connect it to an Alexa or a Google Home or uh, whatever a, an Apple Home or whatever uh, platform that you want to connect it to. Also understand you still want to have a keypad functionality as well in case the system is not working for the uh, uh, for your mobile device. Absolutely. So have a backup. There, there are some out there that are Wi-Fi only, mm -hmm. and, and that does inhibit you from being able to get in the door if the Wi-Fi is down in any way. So knowing that you, know, you still have a keypad, you can touch it, makes it lock and turns the screen on, those are the things that you want to also have. All right, so DIY installation, how difficult is it to install? Second is the ease of programming. How easily can I add and take codes away? Well, what's something else that I would want to be mindful of? Um, for, for the residential lock, I really think that's, that's the things that you're looking for. You know, how many, can I, can I get people in? Can I get people out? Um, can I make it Wi-Fi if I need it? And is it easy to install? Those were the things that were really important for me when I put a very similar lock on my house. What if I'm uh, the homeowner and I come in and I want to make sure that nobody else can come in? So I've, I've come in for the evening and maybe uh, somebody else may have a code and I want to make sure that they can't use the code to come in. So, so they do have a function for that. Um, and that, that function allows you to, to lock the lockdown and, and disable codes 
for the evening, for the week, for the whatever it is that you want to disable those codes and gives you that privacy to not let people through when you don't want them to come through. So some major factors for home use, uh, be mindful of that. If you want to be able to connect it up to some type of a smart home system, uh, following those those processes and check that out as well. I know uh, many people are, are really uh, honed in on using their mobile device for everything, uh, having it well connected, that's that's great. But in what are some of the practical reasons why you would want to go keyless? So one of the big reasons for, for me going keyless um, was was kids. Yeah. So your your kids, they're going to lose keys. Luckily, they don't lose combinations as easy as they lose keys, but mm -hmm. kids can forget combinations too. Um, but I can also unlock it from anywhere with my phone. Mm -hmm. So the kids... They never lose their phones, believe it or not. They'll lose your keys, but they won't lose their phones. So they're getting off the bus. They have they don't have to worry about keeping up with a key, and they can get in the house very easily. They can get in the house very easily. Um, and then just kids outside playing, riding dirt bikes, doing the things that they do, they can come and go as they need. You can still have the house locked. I would also imagine, too, like if you're, if you're out uh, running or cycling or whatever, and you typically are trying to keep up with a key, it, it makes that a lot easier as well because you don't have to worry about keeping up with extra stuff Ab when you go out to exercise. Absolutely. Just about anything that I do, I don't think about taking my keys anymore other than driving my vehicle. If I'm not driving my vehicle, I don't think about taking my keys at all. All right. So that handles kind of the, the residential, the home uh, setup. And now what happens if the batteries die? And so I what happens if the batteries no die on this particular lock? And I'm going to turn it just a little bit. Here on the bottom, you're going to see two silver tabs. Mm -hmm. Take a nine... Um, 9-volt battery set against those two silver tabs, that'll power the lock to get you in. So obviously, if the batteries went all the way dead and you didn't notice it, you can still get in through this lock. So just anybody can put a 9-volt battery there and it'll unlock? It will not unlock. You still have to have your code. Okay. That gives it enough power to get the to get your code in and get it unlocked. Then obviously, you'll need to change your your AA batteries on the back side. And, and it gives you plenty of warnings to that point. So if you've ignored all those... It, then yes. <laughs> it, it, um, the one at my house will give you about three months of warnings. So... Um, and I push that all the way to the end. I, I do know that from experience. Yeah, you, you probably wait for the low fuel light to come on as well. Yep. All right, so uh, that's for your house. What about uh, for your business? So we're going to switch it around here, and we'll look at a commercial lock that's made by the same company. It's, it's um, interesting because they're, they both have, I, I would imagine, both similar types of functionality, but uh, a, a, how, a lock for your house is only going to get used a couple of times a day. Your business probably going to get used more than that. Absolutely. So this is, this is a grade one lock, so it... It's rated to, to take a lot of, you know, a lot of cycles. Mm -hmm. um, very similar, made by the same company. And um, it's push button this time. Instead of the screen, it does come both ways. But depending on the, the amount of users that you have, this may be an easier function that you look for. All right, so what are some things that I want to look for in a, a lock for my business? So a lock for your business, one of the big things you, you look for is, does it have a door prop alarm? Okay. So if I leave the door open or leave you know, a, something in it to prop the door, will it give me an alarm? Can I see that? Because it's not locking your door anymore if the door's been propped. Now, what about installation for a commercial lock? Is, is this going to fit in the same hole as an this, existing lock? This is no longer going to fit in the same hole as the existing lock. There is going to be some drilling. Um, it's, it's a lot more difficult to install than the, the do-it-yourself deadbolt that you have at your residential. So, so some, a few modifications to a door uh, to make that work. So it may be something that you're going to want to source somebody for, but you know, unless you want to uh, tackle it yourself. So you've got the, the installation is a little different. Programming, how does the programming differ for something like this? Uh, you, you have some more features here okay. that, than you had before. Um, one of the features that you have on this particular lock is a passage feature. So say you have this on the front door of your business, and you, you have employees that come in and out through the night, but sure. during the day, you want your customers just to be able to walk in. You can program this to, to be unlocked and just let people come through as needed during the day. So just operate like a normal door handle during Absolutely. the day, and then you can lock it back. Works really well for like a conference room or a, a facility that's that's used rarely, those kind of things. This is a really good application there. Now, when it comes to this, you, you punch in a code, does it stay unlocked or does it automatically lock itself back when you finish? You get to choose. Okay. So, and you get to choose the time that you add to that. So that's one of the features you want to look for depending on how you want your door to lock. You can have it, um, I think this particular lock is between three seconds and three minutes okay. that you can leave it unlocked. And then you can obviously put it into passage mode after that if that was something you want to do with a separate code. Ease of programming for this uh, versus the home lock. The programming is almost exactly the same for this and the home lock. Um, ease of programming is really, really nice on this. 
Um, when you get into some of the more detailed features, it takes a little more time. But as far as adding and deleting users, the regular programming things that you're doing on a regular basis, not the stuff you do in the initial setup, exactly the same. Now, a lot of I think a lot of questions that we get on how, how many people can you actually put in this lock, it comes into play a lot of times. And I know there's a difference between the one for your home and for your business. Uh, what, uh, what, is, is, what, it, what should I keep in mind when I'm looking for those? So obviously you're going to figure out how many people do you need, mm -hmm. and then you're going you're gonna to find a lock that meets those features. Um, this lock holds 255 user codes. So if you know more than 255 people that need to come into your business, you're going to need to look for a different lock. Mm -hmm. um, most locks of this type are going to be around that 200 to 250 range because that's, you know, that's really the, the number there that starts to get unmanageable. All right, so this particular lock for your business may need a little more complicated installation. Uh, you're going to have to use a drill to, to modify the door a little bit. Not completely out of the realm of DIY, but uh, may need some additional resources on it. Programming is very similar, so you can do it all on the, the keypad. There's no need for any type of a, a special device to program it. That is correct. No, right. no special device. And, and it has some functionality with a door position switch. And we also have a, a key override on here. Why is that important uh, in relation to this type of lock? So you, the key override here, it can also fit into your master key system. Okay. So if you, you've got a big commercial building and they, the, the master key still needs to be part of it, that can fit right in. So for the fire department, for being able to access it if through the box. If you have a building box. that has a Knox box, the fire department doesn't want to know the code, they want a key, and they'll open that through a Knox box and get right in. So the original question is, what is the best type of keyless entry lock? And the, the answer, I think, is the one that fits the needs that you're looking for. Yeah, it's... I mean, you can ask what's the best kind of car, but the, you can't give that answer because there's a lot of cars. It's what do you need the car to do? Mm -hmm. So the best kind of combination lock to get you into your business or your home is what does it does it fit your needs properly? Yep. And we've shown a couple of different locks here um, that will work for commercial or for residential. And there are so many options available. It really is based off of the application, the type of door, and there's a lot of variable factors there. So we would love to help figure that out with you and help consult with you to make sure that whatever you're putting on the door is going to fit your needs. So we invite you to connect with us. You can do that by giving us a call or clicking the link in the information below, and we'll be happy to connect with you and help figure out uh, what is the best keyless lock for your particular situation. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.